Good evening everybody for the very last seminar of this winter series 2013-2014. As this is the last session of this series, it's a special one because we have two speakers today. The first one is Rainer Komp, who's presenting his <coughs> research on chronological concepts of the ancient world in linked data. Um, we have a talk and a um, discussion after that that's going to be in English and is also being recorded and then being put online. After that we have a second talk by Georg Roth, which will be different in, in, in terms of language, which will be German and it will be a different topic. And this is not going to be recorded, so it's some sort of extra addendum. So we have that afterwards. First, I'd like to welcome Rainer Kompf, who's a close colleague of some of us because he's working at the German Archaeological Institute for quite some while. And he started uh, after being responsible for different technical issues at the IT department, he started some research work two years ago, one and a half years ago, more or less. And I'm very happy that he's here to present some aspects and thoughts, ideas about this project, which is still a project in process and not finished results. So, Rainer, it's your talk, it's your time now. Okay, thank you, Felix, for your kind introduction. And um, good evening, dear colleagues. I'm, I do really appreciate um, very much your preference of attending the seminar here with us, uh, rather than um, following the news of the Olympic Games at Sochi. But um, to give you some comfort about this, I'd like to remember that the Olympic Games um, are a matter, of course, for ancient chronology too. So we will um, causally um, uh, mention them during the talk. Um, I will be talking on um, chronological concepts um, of the ancient mm, world in linked data um, and I'm very much focusing um, this um, topic to Roman consuls as eponyms. So um, I had to really narrow down this huge um, area of chronological concepts and um, there's all anyway enough to talk about this. Um, in front of this audience, I don't, um, definitely do not need to explain the semantic web or linked data. Although not yet widely accepted, there's a growing community of um, archaeologists, philologists and um, historians already creating and providing permanent identifiers for objects, persons, locations or even concepts. And recently, several implementations um, have shown up, like specialized gazetteers for antiquity, um, for example, Pleiades or the IDAI gazetteer from the German Archaeological Institute, and also frameworks for integrating these linked data, meanwhile also providing research results from analysis. And um, this, for example, the Pelagius or the Hellespont project, among different others. While these have focused um, mainly on geospatial data, according to the general hype on availability and, and techniques for geodata visualization, I would um, like to argue that the temporal aspect is the missing link to eventually get a breakthrough with our linked data sets. For the historian, the main attribute given to objects of research and to classify them is the date of origin. An object or a person or a place can never be seen or even connected without the temporal relationship. While some concepts argue that time does not exist at all, for now let's assume there's something like this and um, continue. Though this has, of course, been percepted earlier, the focus on time has been given to the classifying concepts of historical dating by, for example, periods. 
for which manifold challenges are going to be addressed by intended strategies like the proposals for the period ontology project in the United States um, carried or intended to carry it out by Ryan Sean and um, Adam Rabinowitz and Leif Isaksen or um, the Kron ontology um, project um, hopefully being granted for the German Archaeological Institute this year. In addition to this, my project tries to get another approach by looking at temporal expressions given in the ancient sources themselves. And this will not be about calendar systems, but reckoning the time frame of a year. In antiquity, we find a special practice of eponymous year referencing. Reckoning of time is a matter of course in daily life for men since ever, mainly motivated by needs for agriculture and already for the hunting communities and in more, in, and in more advanced societies for structuring the daily life. This had led to even early scientific-like observations of cycles given by the sun or moon responsible for the day, the week, month and eventually the seasons. And since then, setting up the only and correct calendar is a discussion for the specialists until now, although nowadays we normally only struggle sometimes about discussions if there is a leap year this year or not. You can see an example of the Roman Fasti Antiatus for a Roman calendar on the right side giving the structure um, of the year within months and um, days and assigning which days are supposed um, for special actions. But distinguished from this is a temporal entity more related to advanced administrative tasks and as a matter of memory or if not history. Eponymous practice means naming things or events by a special designated person and has a long tradition. While, for example, the Peloponnesian War is a modern term, um, we know, for example, also units like degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit um, named for their inventors or even the Obamacare. It is an act of honor and also an easy way of memorizing. For example, you might not know much about the year 2005 anymore, but probably more about the context of the year in which the Hurricane Katrina happened. Together with the concepts of calendars, the practice of naming a year by an official eponym came from the Orient to Greece and Rome, and in contrast to calendar systems, it was in use since about 2000 BC until late antiquity. Of course, locally adapted to the eponymous office. The eponymous office, which in Greece um, were diverse, according to the diversity of the polis, and although there came up the counting of cycles of Olympic Games, but only for historians as means of kind of universe dating, today we would discuss whether the winter or summer games are taken into account for the new cycle. It is important to state that the eponymous function of the office holders was always attached to an existing office. There has never been an office introduced as being eponymous. This is true also for Rome. The consuls, a collegium of two people, built the highest ranked yearly office in the Roman Republic, political as well as military. And although it lost its power later to the emperors, it maintained to exist and being used as eponymous entity for the year until late antiquity. This was used in a special formula-like expression within texts of all kind, for daily life as well as for legal contracts and monumental statements. 
Have a look at naming the year 87 BC, when the consuls Lucius Cornelius and Gnaeus Octavius held their office. We can distinguish two person entities as well as a legal entity, the consulship, and all together form a temporal entity. This is what I am going to work with. Let us leave the eponymous dating practice with these simple rules as a basis for now. I will come back to more specific challenges um, of Roman eponymous um, dating um, later. Like in Greece, we also know of a numbered year counting system in Rome, counting from the foundation of the city but again, not officially um, used um, and only rarely by historians. Now, let's move over to the source texts in which eponymous practice is attested. In the first place, there's the comprehensive literature passed down to us, comfortable for analysis because of more or less correct and complete phrases. There describing the practice as well as using it. Inscriptions are a huge field of interest and this does not only include inscriptions on stone but any other media like ostraca, papyri, wooden or wax tablets. Not a special medium for inscriptions but a special genre um, are the fasti, for example the fasti capitolini from Augustian time. Um, as an example, just for a table listing the consuls used for the eponymous dating from the beginning, including also special remarks. The Pontifex Maximus was responsible for maintaining these lists and formally he also noted remarkable events of the according year until this practice was discarded due to its very confusing character in these um, tables. Emperor stamps are another special but um, important source. Um, as we know them, um, many of them, for example, from Rhodes. So the eponym officers st stamped their name, their sign, into the emperor handles, and um, therefore we can date them. Finally, of course, coins um, have to be mentioned because they are representing consuls in depiction as well as in the inscription and um, are very closely related and sometimes um, good datable also um, by researchers. Many um, textual uh, sources are published, but for our purposes in um, digital data, we need a digital representation of them. Unfortunately, this raises a problem because there are not many digital re um, representations of the, the named sources. And nevertheless, there are some resources fulfilling our requirements, like open access and especially a standard encoding. For example, the Perseus Digital Library is providing text encoded according to the text encoding initiative, the TII standard. While, for example, the Packard Humanities Institute um, is nice for searching and browsing text, but um, not for interacting. For inscriptions, the Epidoc, Epidoc standard has been developed as an extension to TII and is increasingly used for encoding. A prime example for implementation um, are the inscriptions of Aphrodisias and Tripolitania, which were the first, first examples um, using Epidoc, really implementing, implying Epidoc, as well as the Vindolanda tablets from a Roman fort in Britannia, testing private and military or merchandising communication. The epigraphical database Heidelberg delivers at least by hidden, hidden feature, um, TI epidoc conformed encoded data 
And also the Papari Info um, Meta Collection does so too. Finally, the upcoming Eagle Portal will be of most interest for us um, comp um, for comprising um, um, and um, offering a huge field of um, inscriptions um, from different collections. For Amphora stamps, unfortunately, um, we, I don't know about any um, representations um, encoded. And it's another case for um, numismatics, um, where the American Numismatic um, Society um, itself um, is providing um, data and is also providing a framework um, within several um, projects like the online um, coins of the Roman Empire project, also a meta portal for different collections um, as um, providing imperial coinage and providing um, XML data and RDF data. Um, I have to mention some more um, resources. Um, not for text, but for describing the links and the authorities we need um, when we're going to deal with um, linked data. There we have some consular lists and their according person details um, in Wikipedia and the DBpedia. Um, and authority files for person names like um, the GND, the Gemeinsame Norm Datenbank in Germany, a standard um, person place um, database. Uh, or um, as an international meta portal, the virtual international authority file. I will discuss them by example later. There are quite good resources um, for these um, other types of scriptures, but um, as they are arbitrary, I leave them for now and focus on literature as the most um, simple items um, for the first step. Now let's move over to have a look at the texts themselves and play a little bit around. I took an example, uh, a phrase from Livy, up over Condita, citing the consuls of the year 503 BC. And um, this is here Agrippa Menenio and Publio Postumio Consulibus. And I wanted to check whether the persons are already detected by some online tools, for which I choose the DBpedia Spotlight. Running for persons, the result showed up one hit for Livius correctly. Okay. While Agrippa is a false positive, as well as some curious items like ut, at the end, ut brutum, um, identified as the US state of Utah. Agrippa links to the friend of Augustus, Agrippa Vipsianus, instead of the one 500 years earlier. So the full name has not been taken into account, Agrippa Menenio, Agrippa Menenius, instead, uh, although as we will see, the famous older Agrippa is known to Wikipedia. Any other entities have not been identified at all. Here are circled um, in blue. And you might have noticed that I have chosen originally German as a language, because Latin is not provided, but anyway, no other language had um, any results, only German. And when I tried again with the English translation of this same phrase, again I had to use German and got some other results. Now Agrippa Menenius is, um, is recognized. 
Brutus, on the other side, is a false positive. Okay, it is recognized, but it's false again 500 years later. And um, other curiosities appear, um, especially designing um, foremost, or well, about consuls or the treasury. It's a special case because, because we can accept them being identified as a legal institution, kind of a legal person. Looking at the same details in Wikipedia reveals efforts for structuring data. For example, the info boxes are introduced and giving some kind of structured information which can more easily be um, extracted and separately shown in the Wikipedia page, but also more easily extracted to other systems like the DBPDR. And um, there's also the um, info box for um, persons. Um, why? Well, you see some kind of adaptation. The monarchs um, in, the, in the first place are um, not really um, representing consul offices, um, but it might work, okay. And the person data, well, it is doubtable whether the language dependent use of data fields is really suitable. Furthermore, attempts um, for extracting office data are given, but um, again, they are sort of compromised, in my opinion. When a colleague is mentioned and the data field for the year, beside texts and even uh, line breaks, um, is showing up a name, a reference to a name, unless this is, in my sense, meant to be a temporal entity. Look at an inscription of, uh, from Roman Spain, which I've taken from the epigraphical database Heidelberg. Um, it is a public legal charter written on Bronx in the year 87 BC, naming the consuls Gnaeus Octavius and Lucius Cornelius Cinna. The transcription in TI Epiduc shows some encoding, but um, especially orthographically expanding the typical abbreviations. But um, for example, no markup of entities or annotations, especially for the persons, not to mention any temporal entity. At least the data set as a whole includes the converted date derived from the inscription in the metadata. This is a state of art mostly owing to the fact that the inscriptions are not encoded originally but transformed from print sources. But historians um, stress the need for referencing the original sources and so machine actionable linked data needs to do so. Anyway, this kind of digital resources is much better than traditionally printed sources which we can't use at all for machine acting. The named consuls um, are listed in the FASTI. Original sources, um, we can see here the um, FASTI, an extract of the um, FASTI Capitolini. And um, accordingly, in Wikipedia, this is not common, for example, for Greek sources because Romans were very popular and feed it very much. And uh, most of the consuls also have a more detailed page. Well, you might argue Wikipedia is, sorry, you might argue um, Wikipedia is um, not a proper source for scientific use. No, indeed, it's not intended for this, but I'm convinced that um, we have to change the relationship between the scientific community and the public. The public asks for participation and we have the chance to give them 
participation. And um, last year we had uh, at the German Archaeological Institute a Wikipedian in residence and um, had a lot of discussion about that. And it's uh, exactly one year um, ago that we had a workshop um, dealing with this issue, how community, public community and science can work together um, for enhancing uh, Wikipedia. Um, but at least, I mean, um, Wikipedia presents for my tasks, the first step, at least some kind of digital data I can work with. And um, my, you, you may also argue that at least it might be a shaming that resources are available for my research um, via, uh, via Wikipedia, but not via the scientific community. And here we find another interesting link, namely um, to the standard, standard person identifiers. Um, some, not really not all, but some um, detailed um, descriptions of persons in Wikipedia already have links to um, unique identifiers. The already mentioned um, Gemeinsame Normdatei or the Virtual International Authority file. And um, for this, I choose um, the Gemeinsame Normdatei because it provides the most, in my opinion, most valuable data as RDF compared to others. And in general, unfortunately, data fields also here in the preview are merged um, instead of being normalized or uh, strictly divided to different data fields so that the permanent identifier can be used for a unified reference but the data is more or less not um, usable, not very practical usable. This goes for the field of more specialized ancient prosop prosop prosopography. And I should refer to Gabriel Baudin, who has recently in Leipzig presented as pers uh, perspective for an according project. Now, having analyzed the given resources, my approach will be dual. While both approaches are working closely integrated and mutual. On one hand, linguistics in form of neuro-linguistic programming have, has to be applied for detecting the relevant entities. And this is supported by the temporal formula, the consulibus formal um, of consuls and assisted by appropriate authority files for disambiguation. And these authority files have um, to be built out of the sources, um, for example, from Wikipedia. And this will also help to annotate the text items with semantically classified and unique references. And the result is the change of building, is the chance, the result is the chance of building huge contexts of knowledge. Now, um, let me sum up um, my approach, my idea a little bit. The eponymous consorts are expressions of both a person and a chronological entity, which can be identified and marked up with machine-assisted linked data and it is again kind of a chicken and egg problem because for now we lack text and reference text in a huge, uh, as huge data, but available as um, some digital text sources and authority files accordingly, which for which we have um, to wait for prosopographical advances. But combining both issues will allow for machine-assisted markup 
and therefore linking to huge contexts immediately by annotation, including the references and providing machine actionable data. So that eventually we have an authority file or a service for eponymous expressions of a year in Rome and enriched coded source files able to interact with linked data. And this is kind of a new dimension, not in the sense of using sources as uh, historians use the sources in this uh, manner in their daily life, um, but providing a machine actionable sources with representing temporary information and temporary aspects. Of course, the work does not stop with the simplified model of eponymous consulship. There are some issues to think about concerning the real use and development of the office, because um, these, um, the, the high-ranked offices um, for consuls is um, correct um, to be mentioned for the um, Roman Republic, while in imperial times, the consulship maintained to exist and um, maintained to be used as eponymous, um, as eponymous but um, it lost its, um, its power to the um, emper emperors. And um, of course, there are some issues um, that um, either by naturally ways or um, by other um, designations, um, there have been sometimes more than two consuls in a year. And um, okay, the Romans had um, maintained more or less um, mentioning the first original consuls. And especially in, in imperial time, for example, we have every two months new consuls. And um, indeed, for the first two centuries, um, it was more or less practice to name and to take the actual consuls as the eponymous consuls. Until in, from the third cent century on, um, there was a shift that only the consuls ordinaria, the first two consuls, have been used. But um, furthermore, um, we have to go to other text genres. So, as I mentioned, inscriptions and especially the um, amphora stamps of the coins. And it would be also very nice to um, examine further cultures to go to Greece and maybe to Assyria, other societies which used this eponymous dating scheme. And uh, we can also go for the epiteta, the by names of, um, for example, the Roman <coughs> emperors. And um, finally, we can also go for other offices because most of the offices um, were yearly offices. They only have not been used for naming the year. But um, in this case, these persons also provide a temporal aspect. And um, this is also valid for person names in general. They all provide a temporal aspect if we have their detailed data from the prosopography. And of course, there are other issues in general, not only for temporal um, entities, but for geospatial entities, of course, um, too and for all data um, derived from antiquity or data we are dealing with in um, digital times. So I hope I could give you an idea of what my work and progress is and I'm keen to your comments now. Thank you very much.